the average stock market return is just over 10% a year. What it actually means is that it is possible to double your money in the stock market in about 7.2 years. And you can find that like, quickly yourself by using the rule of 72. The rule of 72 is a simple financial trick that allows you to quickly calculate how much time it takes for an investment to double. All you have to do is to divide the number 72 by the annual interest rate or the expected rate of return. In this case, like we said before, the average annual stock market return is 10%. Therefore, 72 divided by 10% is 7.2 or 7.2 years to double your initial investment. Keep in mind that this is just an estimated number. In contrast, using the same rule, it will take over 550 years to double your money in your savings account. To find that out, divide 72 by the national average yearly interest rate for savings accounts, which is 0.13% APY. I'm not kidding. Of course, there are risks associated with investing in the stock market. Investing is not a risk-free endeavor. As in the investment world, risk and return go hand in hand, since low risk typically translates to low expected returns, while bigger risks typically come with possible higher profits. So the choice is yours. Do you want a riskier but historically proven chance to double your money every 7.2 years or you can always choose the safety and peace of mind of an ordinary savings account and wait 550 years to double your money. Good luck with that. And now, you know why wealthy people invest in the stock market. Apparently, they have a much smaller life expectancy than those investments in their savings accounts. And there's more. In fact, much more. Here are some other advantages of investing in the stock market. The first one, is that you don't need to have a lot of money to start investing. In fact, you can start investing with as little as a few dollars. In contrast, how much money do you think you need to buy a property? Considering closing costs and down payment, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, depends on where you live. A second advantage of investing in the stock market is that it is highly liquid, meaning it is very easy to buy and sell stock. Stocks can be easily converted to cash in case of emergency. For comparison, how long does it take to buy or sell a house? A third advantage is the low transaction fees. Nowadays, you can buy and sell stocks for free or for really low commission costs in most brokerage accounts, as opposed to spending thousands and thousands of dollars in closing costs alone when you buy and sell real estate. As closing costs alone, which is the cost to buy or sell a property, can make up to 3 to 6% of the loan amount. A fourth advantage is that the fact that you can lower your tax burden and enjoy some meaningful tax advantages when you invest in some selected tax advantage retirement accounts. Keep your eyes open because I'm making an entire video dedicated to that really soon. Now that we talk about the whys, Let's get started talking about the how. In this video, I will talk about the basics, share with you everything you need to get started today if you want to. But before we get started, I want you to be clear, I'm not here working as your financial advisor. But if I were, I would give you a little homework and I would ask you to think of the six things before you start investing today. Go ahead and write that down. Number one, what is your investment goal. Most dreams can be achieved by creating a plan. Without a plan, all you got is wishful thinking. Number two, what is your investment time frame? When do you want to achieve that goal? Make sure to think in terms of short-term and long-term goals. Your time frame will help you determine where and how much you should invest to achieve that goal. Number three, what is your risk tolerance? Are you a risk taker? Do you have the stomach for risk investments? Or you are the type of person who will lose sleep 
if the stock prices lose value. Number four, think of a diversification strategy. You shouldn't put all your eggs in one single basket. And for obvious reasons, how much you want to allocate to each investment will depend on your risk tolerance. Number five, which product do you want to start investing in? Which product suits your best goal? Are you investing for retirement, maybe a college fund for your kids, or are you investing to save money to buy a house? And last, but not least, number six, you should go ahead and click the like and subscribe button because investing in yourself is the best investment you can do. Now that you have a draft of what you want to accomplish, let's talk about the how you get there. So what are stocks or shares? And what is the stock market? Stocks, also known as equities or shares, represent a fractional ownership in a publicly listed company. So when you buy a share or stock of a company, you become part owner of it. And the stock market refers to public markets that exist for issuing, purchasing, and selling stocks. The stock market is made up of a network of exchanges, including the New York Exchange and the NASDAQ. The exchanges provide liquidity to investors, in other words, a place where there is a lot of people with lots of money that can buy and sell stocks. A place where trades can be processed efficiently without delays and without substantially impacting the stock price. Investors can take advantage of the stock market by purchasing or selling stocks. The stock market is important for two reasons. It has two vital purposes. The number one purpose is to supply capital or money to business so that they can fund and expand their operations. That way, they can grow faster. By issuing stocks, a publicly traded company such as Apple or Tesla for instance, can raise an enormous amount of capital without having to borrow money from banks and other investors and pay interest charges on that debt. The second purpose of the stock market is to allow shareholders or investors, which are the people who own stocks like you and me, to partake in the profit of these companies. And as an investor, you can profit from owning stocks in two ways. You can sell a stock for a profit if the stock price increases from the purchase price or you can just sit and collect dividends and dividends is the distribution of some of the company's earnings to its investors and luckily for us some companies pay regular dividends to shareholders dividends provide investors with income reduce risk and allow shareholders to profit from owning the stocks without having to sell their stocks in today's unstable economic environment, dividend distributions provide investors with some needed peace of mind. Investors should look for companies that boast long-term expected earnings growth of at least 5 to 15%, have strong cash flow and low debt to equity ratio. If you want to learn more about financial ratios, you can check our playlist titled Investing Like a Pro. Now, you must be asking yourself, how do I buy a stock? In a minute, I will tell you how to get started and an easy way that you can get up to 12 free stocks in the process, assuming you qualify for it. To buy stocks, you need the assistance of a stock broker. The easiest way to buy a stock is to use an online platform that works as a stock broker. To get access to an online platform, it only will take you a few minutes to set up an account and all you need to do is provide some personal information and open a brokerage account. Once you have that account, you can deposit funds into your new brokerage account and start investing. There are two categories of brokers, full service brokers and discount brokers. Full service brokers, such as Fidelity, Vanguard, Charlotte Schwab, provide a variety of expert investment research and advice, in addition to a comprehensive financial planning. On the downside, they are typically more expensive. Online or discount brokers typically provide the basic services. They are easy to use and you can purchase or sell stocks for free. If you are looking for a easy to use online discount broker for beginners, you should consider the investing platform Webull. 
Weibo is a free stock trading app that allows you to buy and sell stocks with no fees or commissions. And today might be your lucky day because Weibo is giving you up to 12 free stocks when you open and fund your account using the link in the description below. So go ahead. What are you waiting for? Get your free stocks today. It's free money. You literally got nothing to lose. Just click in the link in the description below to get started. The next important thing I want to explain to new investors for you who are starting out is how share prices are set. But always remember, most successful investors agree that investors should focus on the business itself and not so much on the stocks. Always keep that in mind. Legendary investor Warren Buffett once said, it is far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. Many smart, well-trained individuals assess the prospect of companies whose stock is traded on the stock exchange. And for the most part, stock prices represent their collective judgment. They reflect the aggregate opinion of investors on a company's current performance and future prospects. When investors are optimistic about the company's performance, its share price will rise. When investors are pessimistic about the company's future, its share price will fall. However, it is important to be aware that the stock market promotes capital to be allocated to companies with the strongest prospects at that specific time. However, things are always changing in the corporate world, and nobody can predict which business will flourish and which will fail with certainty. Therefore, it is unreasonable to think that the markets will never make mistakes. Supply and demand determine the price for each security or the levels at which the stock market participants are willing to buy or sell at any given time. What is a stock market index? Stock market indexes are composed of a selection of stocks that are grouped around a particular industry or they could just represent the stock market overall. They are designed to reflect how stocks are performing. Some of the key stock market indexes in the United States are the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is a price weighted index that tracks the 30 uh, large US blue chip stocks, the Standard and Poor's 500 Index, or commonly known as the S&P 500, which measures the value of the stocks of the 500 largest corporations by market capitalization listed on the New York Exchange or the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ Compost Index, which tracks stocks that are listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange. The NASDAQ, of course, has a high concentration of companies in the technology sector. And investing in a passively managed index fund is a great way to get involved in the stock market because it has a low cost and has a proven track record. The average annualized return of investing in the S&P 500 stocks since adoption is just over 10%. In fact, the Nasdaq Composite Index, which tracks the technological sector, has done even better than S&P 500 and it has a 10-year annualized average of 14.39%. Which brings us to the question, when should you get started investing? Short answer, as early as possible. The earlier the better. Think of it as if you're considering to plant the entry in your backyard to get some shade and a place where you can hang your hammock. The tree takes time to grow, from seed to a grown tree. The same thing is to be said about investing. And I know it's hard. You got your rent, your utility bills, your groceries, car payments, and there's not much that you can afford to get started investing. In fact, 58% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, according to a lending club report. But once you get your budget and figure it out, and you are able to set aside a little cash in an emergency fund, it is time to start investing. It's time to plant that seed. And here is a message for the young folks. Don't waste time. This is a golden opportunity. Because investing when you're young and you have time on your side is the best way to achieve solid returns over the long term. And that is thanks to 
compound earnings, which is a process in which your assets, earnings, such as your stock's dividends, are reinvested to generate additional earnings over time and create a snowball effect of your investment. And I know you are asking how much money I need to get started. Well, the short answer is not much, really. Investing in small amounts nowadays is easier than ever, thanks to zero commissions and the ability to buy fractional shares, which simply means you don't have to buy a whole share anymore. So let's say you want to invest in Netflix and a whole share is selling for about $230, but you only have $20 to invest right now. You can simply buy $20 worth of a Netflix share, which is about what? One tenth of it. And if the Netflix price goes up by 10%, your fraction also goes up by 10%. Now, obviously, the more you contribute on a regular basis, the better. Let's say you invest $200 every month or about $6.60 per day for the next 10 years. And you get the historical average of the stock market return, which is 10%. Your future balance would be around $38,800 in 10 years, from which $24,200 would be your money, your capital, and the remaining $14,000 would be just in appreciation. If you keep the same strategy from the age of 20, old, 20 years old to the age of 60, an investment of $200 a month will get you a future balance of over $1 million. To be more precise, $1,072,000, from which you contributed $96,000 from your own money, or less than $100,000, and more than $975,000 you earn from appreciation alone. That's more than 11 times of what you contributed, get it? And that's just $200 per month. You can do 300, 500, 1000, obviously the more you put, the more you get back. Okay, I get it, you are still hesitant because you think investment is risky. Yes, it is risky. But American author and motivational speaker Jim Rohn, get it right. He says, it's all risky. He says that the minute you were born, you got risky. He goes to say that getting married is risky, having kids is risky, opening a business is risky. And if you think investing is risky, Wait until you get the bill for not investing. Risk is inherent in almost all real assets, as well as most aspects of life. Investors make investments in the hopes of predicting future returns, but these returns are not always exact. Higher expected returns come at the cost in terms of increased investment risk. The price of a stock is largely influenced by investors' fear and greed. Every investor experiences these emotions, but you may improve your financial success by being aware of your levels of greed and policing yourself. A buy and hold investment strategy is the easiest way to build wealth from stocks. And that is because of the power of compounding. Your total profit will be the result of the accumulation of the dividends and the stock's capital gains. But here is what I can tell you. At the end of the day, when you don't invest, one sure thing you can count on is that your money will lose its value due to something called inflation. So how to decide which share to buy? Now, that is the hard question because it takes time to learn enough to pick individual stocks. So if you're starting now, I would probably advise you to start by buying a low cost index fund as opposed to picking individual stocks. As I said before, the average annualized return of investing in the S&P 500 stocks since adoption is just over 10% per year. And the technology-heavy Nasdaq did even better, with a mean annual return of more than 18% per year. Sure, the Nasdaq took a beating in 2022 and is down more than 32% so far this year, but it was up 27% in 2021 it was up by 48% in 2020, and it was near 40% up in 2019. So remember, we are talking average here. Some years, you do extremely well, and some years, not so well, and you will take a hit. That is the game. Consider it the price of admission. Hey friends, do us a big favor if you are still watching, and please drop us a like.
And if you want to be part of our community, go ahead and subscribe and share our content to someone you think you may benefit from watching this video. And if you want to know a solid four-step strategy to become a stock market millionaire, stay tuned and watch my next video next week where I will be going over a proven four-step strategy how to get you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.